Okay, so if you've clicked on this video, you might be expecting something like, cancel culture run amok, special snowflake edition canceled by my own dog. The comedians were right. So sorry to disappoint you, but we won't be going in that direction today. We won't actually be going in the other direction either. We're on the Z axis today and there's no going back. I mean, you can turn the video off, but don't be like that. Hi, I'm Magdalene Rose, and today we're going to be talking about canceling the good, the bad, and the historical significance. So history uh, sucked, as in times before now. Before modern science elevated mankind, our lives were consumed by terrible events. Storms, famine, plagues, just a stream of spoiled crops and dead babies. Ugh, the worst. You can imagine that the average person experienced a lot of anxiety, and they would look to their leaders, either political or religious, to do something about it. Do something! Do something! Do something! But what can a queen or a high priest do about the weather, or a fungus that ruins your crops. Not a lot, frankly. But they're not completely helpless. Because if there's one thing humanity loves, it's a ritual. They can be so comforting, just a, just a little teddy bear for your brain. A significant ritual for quelling this kind of environmental anxiety was human sacrifice. And make no mistake, this was not exclusive to uncivilized cultures. This happened all over the world on every continent. Nobody appears to have learned it from anyone else. Like the Europeans weren't trekking the Silk Road, saw some human sacrifice and went, oh my God, I love it. Like, we have to do this next year. Now in modern day, human sacrifice is um, uh, frowned upon, uh, but we still have all these anxieties and just a love for ritualistic murder. Now you might be worried that at this point I'm going to go into some rant about how canceling is modern day human sacrifice. And to be clear, it is, but it's not bad. Or well, sometimes it is, but um, it is at least historically pretty normal. <laughs> So there's a lot of debate about canceling and who is worthy of being canceled. I think most agree that people like Harvey Weinstein or R. Kelly deserve to have their transgressions exposed to the public and face serious consequences. Both are extremely wealthy, influential individuals who probably would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those damn hashtags. Canceling began as a way of holding powerful people accountable for their actions, but I suspect that everyone has at least one cancellation where they looked at it and thought, was this really necessary? And who those people are is a matter of perspective. Finding out your favorite actor or author is canceled is now commonplace. Why is this? Well, I have a theory. I think the definition of canceling has shifted. It began as a way of elevating the voices of people who had been silenced by powerful men and has ended up a much looser term. And I know people frame it really negatively, like cancel culture run amok, but it's actually pretty common for language to evolve like this over time. Canceling currently means something closer to mob justice, a group of people lifting one of their own over their heads and just chucking them into the pit. <laughs> Why? Well, because it makes us feel better. Human sacrifice is a way of taking all the problems we see in our world, projecting them onto something else, and then destroying it. It's a communal rejection of something we want to rid from our culture. Bigotry, greed, violence, these are all violations of our tribal code. Thou hast broken the rules, Stephen Miller. To do nothing is to allow that behavior to fester and spread throughout the community. And that may seem weirdly archaic or even primitive, but it's also true. Our leaders not condoning that behavior led to more of that behavior. Since 2016, we've seen a huge surge in the United States of hate crimes and politically motivated violence. When people say like, oh, we have to stop canceling people, I'm like, good luck. I mean, you're fighting thousands of years of human history here. And to be honest, like this is the most humane way we've ever done this. Pre-Christian people are a great example of what I'm talking about here. Before Abraham, you know, did his thing and made the Jews, people were polytheistic, you know, just worshiping whatever goat deity wandered their way. <laughs> I'm kidding, please don't hex me. Anyway, full-blown human sacrifice was pretty common, especially the firstborn son. 
There's a lot of speculation as to why. One theory is fathers felt this sort of Oedipal anxiety about their sons usurping their power. They felt emasculated by the virility of their male children. But eventually someone was like, this is um, a lot of dead babies. And among other things, it's just a terrible military strategy to kill all your firstborn sons. Like, do you know what I mean? <laughs> but how can we comfort ourselves and communally reject thing that is bad without having so many dead babies? And this is where the Jewish tradition of the scapegoat was invented. You take a goat, you project all the sins of the community onto said goat, and then you send it away. The people who sinned still totally did all those things, but the community is now allowed to move on and to heal and nobody had to die. I, for one, feel so much better now that that stupid goat is gone. It's pretty illogical, but humans have never been fully logical beings. We are, as David Hume said, a slave to the passions. I just realized that this sounds like I'm blaming the Jews for the concept of canceling, but that's not what I'm saying, no. When we choose a person online to cancel, most of us don't know that person. Like, we weren't involved, we don't know the details, we weren't hurt by it, but we do happily take part in the spectacle. Because in rejecting the scapegoat, we are rejecting what they represent. Whether it's racism, sexism, the entitled raging of the upper class, we are adding our voice to the rejection of an idea. Since the Me Too movement started, people are a lot more aware of how common sexual harassment is, and men on average seem much more aware of how the things that they do make women uncomfortable. The national conversation about it has led to actual change. I've noticed an exponential rise in canceling over the last four years, and I can't help but notice that this rise correlated with a chaotic social, political, and environmental upheaval culminating in 2020, widely considered one of the shittiest years on record. When populations are forced to confront their dark side, we find it necessary to purge the darkness. We look for ways to exercise or purify the offending element from our midst. So yeah, we're gonna sacrifice some people, probably more than usual you know, to keep the crops green. <laughs> so when someone does something horrible, it's really common for them to retreat to a fainting couch and cry that the whole thing is a witch hunt. And the hell of it is, they're not even wrong. They're just not right in the way that they think that they're right. A witch hunt describes someone who is unfairly judged by a community that is overreacting. Somehow when the judgment is directed at us, it is always conveniently an overreaction. The most common reason people are canceled currently are things like bigotry, sexism, and white supremacy, all things that are very real and very destructive to civilization. Though it is kind of a witch hunt, to be honest, just not a bad one. Like, it's a witch hunt if witches were real and actually, like, worshipping the devil and hexing people's cattle. In which case, yeah, burn the goddamn witch. But the unfortunate reality of canceling is when you cast a wide net you are inevitably going to catch a few innocent people. I'm not going to name names, mostly because I don't want to distract from my point by getting in some long drawn out debate about who is and who isn't a bad, but I think that canceling goes wrong when we confuse bigotry or other violations with just like being an asshole. Other times it's just cowardice, like being too frightened to take a hardline stance on something. For instance, I've known people who are such pathetic attention-seeking contrarians or so avoidant of confrontation that they can barely stand up for themselves, let alone other people. But neither would cast their lot in with a racist group or some far-right gang. And I just don't think people like that deserve to be dragged to the altar, you know what I mean? Like, not everyone is capable of being a foot soldier in the battle against thing that is bad. I mean, I'm not inviting them to my tea party either. I'm not gonna have some avoidant centrist in my parlor, <laughs> ew. I guess people want a conclusive answer. Is canceling good or bad? Well, I mean, it can be used to strike at those who abuse their power and help direct us towards the values we want. So that's good. But other times, we're just throwing people on the fire to ease our despair. So I guess my hot take is, it's neither or both. Canceling simply is. That being said, it is important to understand why we cancel people. 
am I speaking truth to power right now? Or am I simply appeasing the 12th century peasant in my soul? You know what would really appease the 12th century peasant in your soul? Subscribing to this channel and supporting me on Patreon. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I remembered to plug the channel at the very end when everyone stopped watching. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you next time. <laughs>